In any history of this country's natural fire program in its national parks and wilderness areas, Bruce Kilgore will be highlighted. Reintroducing fire back into fire-dependent ecosystems has been Bruce Kilgore's lifetime calling. This nationally renowned fire ecologist holds a master's degree in journalism from the University of Oklahoma and a doctorate in zoology from UC Berkeley, where he studied the impact of fire on breeding bird populations in sequoia mixed conifer forests. Bruce's noteworthy fire ecology work has spanned beyond the federal land management agencies to include collaborations with the Sierra Club, where he worked with this environmental organization's executive director, David Brower. Among his many pivotal accomplishments, Bruce was responsible for publishing the 1963 Leopold Report in the Sierra Club Bulletin. This now legendary report, authored by visionary scientist and scholar A. Starker Leopold, son of American ecologist, forester, and environmentalist Aldo Leopold, opened the door for using fire in our national parks, forests, and rangelands to encourage ecological health. Bruce was among a handful of important visionaries in the last century who realized the importance of natural fire cycles to help maintain the diversity of habitats for all species in an ecosystem, from wildlife to wildflowers. In the following, Bruce discusses his work with these noted fire ecologists and conservationists, the original source of his own wilderness ethic, and his love for Aldo Leopold's influential classic nature book, A Sand County Almanac. If I go back far enough, I probably, some of my Boy Scout work, I suppose, I, I, I hiked the John Muir Trail uh, when I was 19, uh, left Yosemite Valley out of a, a blister rust crew. I tried to get two other people to join me, and each, each one gradually peeled off as we got closer and closer to Labor Day and said they had to work another week or so. And I'd already planned, and I, I guess I was going to do the John Muir Trail that summer. So I left Yosemite Valley and uh, 10 days later ended up on top of Mount Whitney, slept there that night because that's what I, I wanted to, I wanted to see that country. Wilderness was very important to me and uh, backcountry was important to me. I, I learned from that trip that human companionship is also important to me and I wasn't going to do that again alone, but I didn't intend to do it that way. It, it, was, it was interesting, the great country I saw, but I was, I was very committed to that sort of thing. I, I would go back, to, I guess, to uh, the flavor of Sand County Almanac and Aldo Leopold. I, I would have been reading that in 1947-48, uh, I guess, at seven, when I was 17, 18, 19 in there. And some of those things had great impact on me. I, uh, I, I guess the philosophy of wilderness was very important to me. Harold Biswell was probably the, the backbone of the fire program in the National Park Service in Yosemite and Sequoia. He, uh, he was the person that I worked most closely with on my PhD. Uh, Starker Leopold was my major advisor, Biswell was on my committee, but Biswell was the guy that I spent time out in, the, in Whitaker's forest with. Uh, I have pictures of him throwing stuff onto piles. We, we were cut piling and burning in, in uh, in uh, Whitaker's forest between 1963 and 67 was the, my time. Harold's offered uh, both uh, technical and philosophical advice, uh, but a great deal of uh, insight into the role of fire and caution, expertise so we wouldn't lose things. He offered demonstrations. We, I, I remember his uh, demonstration burns were one of the most effective ways of communicating what was happening, he would get uh, representatives of state, federal, county agencies together, probably late in the summer, maybe end of August, early September, to spend a day going around Whitaker's Forest and, and talking about what had happened, what the results were. He'd call on people like Jim Agee and Jan Ben Wank, Jan Ben Wank to Doc and me to Ron Wakamoto to report on, on some phases of what were happening there and uh, in, engage a number of people who were skeptics from the, the agencies uh, in the role of fire and how prescribed burning could be carried on. He had personal attributes. He was a very approachable kind of guy. He, he was... Uh, 
he had enthusiasm for what he was doing. He wasn't just, I mean, he was a strong academic. He knew his, his field, but as Bob Barbie found out when he uh, approached Harold one time, why he came down to Berkeley to talk to Harold for 15 minutes and they talked for 15 minutes and Harold grabbed his stuff and said, let's go. And Bob says, where? And we're going up to the park. We're not just talking here, let's go look at it. And he apparently went up to Yosemite and Bob spent several days with him. That's the story I remember. You, Bob will tell you or you know that story. But, but Harold had an enthusiasm and, and a knowledge and an ability to communicate uh, with people. As I, I mentioned, these demonstration plots, but he communicated well with uh, audiences of, of most any kind, uh, scientific audiences, but also non-technical audience folks. And uh, I guess a combination of expertise, uh, ability to communicate with students, to encourage students. Bruce now recalls Starker Leopold, the chief author of Wildlife Management in the National Parks, commonly known as the Leopold Report. Published in 1963, this controversial report featured a series of recommendations on how this country's national parks should be administered. Specifically, it heralded the importance of fire to this country's natural landscapes. Uh, Starker Leopold was accused of being a biopolitician because he, he was a scientist and yet his, his Leopold report had huge political implications. He was working at a very high level. He was, Stuart Udall, Secretary of the Interior, asked Starker to, to head this committee and, uh, and, and the people on his committee were, were Ira Gabrielson, President of the Wildlife Management Institute, Tom Kimball, President of the National Wildlife Federation. The, the people that were part of the uh, Leopold report panel were highly uh, placed sort of folks. If those five people recommend that something better be done in the, in the parks about this accumulation of, uh, of hazardous uh, brush and so forth under the trees in Lassen, Sequoia, and Yosemite, and put it in a report and send it to the Secretary of the Interior, it, it started off as a wildlife report and Starker and his committee broadened it to a comment on, on ecosystem management, that it had a strong component of fire management, and uh, it was national parks, but it, some of us that began working in the park service realized that I had to reach across. That's an academic uh, colleague who, who uh, if I can paraphrase that, may be envious of Starker's ability to be a professor and teaching his students, and yet he's dealing directly with the Secretary of the Interior in Washington, giving a report that has major impact on, on agency policy. They're, they're saying he shouldn't be doing that. He ought to be writing technical papers in, on wildlife management. That's, that's the job of a university. It depends how you look at that. From my standpoint, Starker offered something to society that was far beyond what that critic who's called him a biopolitician has ever done. Bruce Kilgore read A Sand County Almanac when it was first published. Throughout his career, he often quoted from his seminal work, illustrating the importance of always reaching back and locating and renewing our wilderness spirit. And one of the, the sections that I, I read, although I, it, it moves me so much I have trouble reading it, but it says that man always kills the thing he loves. And so we pioneers have killed our wilderness. Some say we had to. Be that as it may, I'm glad I shall never ha be young without wild country to be young in. Of what avail are 40 freedoms without a blank spot on the map? That sort of thing has a huge importance to me as my, my commitment to national parks and, and to wilderness. And for me, national parks and wilderness are, are about the same thing because the the part of parks I care the most about is the wilderness segments of parks, and that's the place where fire plays the greatest role. Let's listen again to Dr. Kilgore's passage from Aldo Leopold's A Sand County Almanac. Remember how these words helped shape Bruce Kilgore's lifelong quest to reintroduce fire back into fire-dependent ecosystems within our national parks and wilderness areas resonate on how this passage underscores the essence of Aldo Leopold's as well as Bruce Kilgore's wilderness philosophy. 
Man always kills the thing he loves. And so, we pioneers have killed our wilderness. Some say we had to. Be that as it may, I'm glad I shall never be young without wild country to be young in. Of what avail are 40 freedoms without a blank spot on the map?